Hey, Coach, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, I was wondering if you could um, kind of share some of your insights into Coach Thompson and like when you got to know him. I guess you got to know him at Arizona State. Um, what was he like as, as a young coach trying to get in the business? Um, and what, what's your relationship been like with him? He's just one of the best humans you'll ever meet. I mean, when you talk about a guy who cares about who cares about his players, a guy who has a relationship with his former players, I mean, he is the definition of, you know, the, the coach that players look up to and want to be because, I mean, he believes in his faith. I mean, he has a loving wife. I mean, he is just – everything about him is who you would want your son to be. I mean, even though he's, even though he's older, but he is that person and that leadership quality. He's honest. But at the same time, he can be stern and he can be challenging. And I think he has that unique ability to challenge people, but challenge them because the respect they have for him, because how he lives every day. And it's just been an honor to be able to work with him. And I worked with him at Arizona State and I stayed in contact with him for the last four years. And we said we were going to work together again. And, and here we are. Thank you, B, for getting to know the little two four seven. Hi, Kenny. I was hoping you can describe your role uh, this upcoming week, if it's going to be any different during during game day in terms of where you're going to be calling plays, how much more you're going to be calling plays with Coach Norvell out. Uh, does it change at all for you? I mean, it changes. You know, when me and Coach are together, obviously we go back and forth and our communication is fluid. On game day, we won't have that back and forth with Coach Norvell. But other than that, I mean, we're on the same page. And I think that's the biggest thing is he's in here. We're creating a game plan together. The entire offensive staff is creating a game plan. We're putting together our packages, and we'll go out there on game day, and uh, Coach and I see eye to eye, and uh, we're just going to lose his eye, which is, you know, you're losing one of the, the best offensive coaches in college football. You know, it's we, we can't say we're not. But at the same time, we've been around together. We've been together for so long that, you know, we're on the same page, and this staff's on the same page. Next will be Andrea Adelson from ESPN. Hey, Coach, I'm just curious how um, practice and preparation has gone this week, just considering how Coach isn't there um, in terms of the way you all have approached it and the way that the players have approached it. I mean, the, the, the thing about what Coach does that's so great is he empowers coaches. So it's really been status quo. I mean, we're missing Coach Norvell and the energy and the passion of him flying around on the field. But from an operation standpoint, it's been status quo. Nothing has changed. The guys have been flying around. We've been going from period to period. There's been, it's not the uh, the old school mentality where the coach blows the whistle and the next period starts. You know, we got a clock that says 20, 21, five minutes is up. Buzzer sounds, our guys know where to go and they're sprinting to the next spot. So it's been extremely status quo, extremely normal from that standpoint. Next will be Dean Williams from more camp. Hey, Kenny, good afternoon. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you. I guess first I want to ask you your excitement uh, being the first game part of this, obviously one of the best rivalries in college football and being able to be a part of that this Saturday. And then just if you can kind of give us an overview of Miami, obviously they got a lot of great, a lot of great athletes on the defensive side of the ball. And what kind of challenge will that pre present to you this Saturday? I mean, I'm excited. I mean, this is one of the best rivalries in college football. So I'm excited to be in the thick of it. You know, I mean, that that's what's fun. That's what makes – College football fun is rivalry, rivalries like these. So I'm extremely excited for that. Uh, in terms of what they do, I mean, they've been one of the best defenses in college football since, you know, Coach Diaz has been there. Uh, they do a great job uh, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, they're attacking, but they don't let up the big play. I think that's something that they've done a great job of over the years is they create the big play, but they don't give up the big play. And I think that's the sign of good defenses. Uh, from a personnel standpoint, really, really good on the D-line. Uh, linebackers are extremely sound in what they do. Defensive backs are playmakers. So, I mean, they, they've got a really good defense. They've got a really good scheme. It'll be a great challenge. Next will be Kurt Weiler from Tallahassee Democrat. Coach Norvell has talked a good bit about the number of guys. He kind of put together the staff who have had coaching experience, who have experience as a coordinator, whether they're a coordinator or not now. How does that help going through something like this, just having so many guys who can have experience stepping into roles, bigger roles? Well, I think it's I think it's essential. I mean, when you're talking about, like you just said, a staff full of guys like that, you know, that's just a testament to Coach Norvell putting together the staff. He wanted leaders. 
He didn't want just a guy who could coach a position. He wanted a guy who could lead a position, lead a group. So when situations like this happen, which nobody can expect, he doesn't have a whole bunch of coaches, he has leaders. And that's why when practice goes, it's status quo because everybody understands that their coach is a leader. Their coach has led bigger groups of people before as a coordinator, as a head coach or whatever role that is. And uh, I think it's just been awesome for us. Coach, how are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Thank you for asking. Um, like my question, best. oh, thank you. It is actually just a terrible shaving job on my part. I just was terrified of cutting my nose. Halloween's um, coming up, so. That's a, yeah, I'm masquerading as somebody who can grow facial hair. Uh, my question is about uh, Coach uh, Tony Stark. Um, yesterday, Coach Norvell mentioned he might be moving into either the box or on the field uh, due to his absence. What does that offer you all as a staff? Awesome. I mean, Tony Tokars is one of the best young coaches in college football. He was the full-time tight ends coach at Memphis last year for, I think, the number 11 offense in the country. Uh, so you're talking about a guy who was just a, a full-time coach, left that position to be a part of what we're doing here. And you don't see that every day. So his knowledge and his value of the system, and similar to me, how we want to attack, uh, it's going to be invaluable for us to have that extra set of eyes in terms of how we want to attack this Saturday and how we want to attack offensively as a whole. I'm sure the receivers were, were not thrilled with the way they performed uh, in the season opener. What did you see from them last week? How did they respond to that? And what have you seen from them uh, going into this game? They're just going to work. And that's all you can do. Uh, they just come out and I mean, Guys have just come out and worked and worked and worked, and you can see it. They've been on the jugs machines at 6 a.m. They've been on the jugs machines after practice. You can see that, you know, that bugged them, which it should. It should, it should bother you. But it's not about the past. It's about how they're going to respond. And I think that as of last week, as of practice today, uh, I think they responded. So they just got to continue to build on that. Coach talked yesterday, you got asked about the uh, the quarterbacks and kind of said that we're going to play whatever guy or guys give us the best chance to win. I guess what with you used Jordan some, I know, and, and limited. Was that something planned going into that game? Is that in, built into the game plan or is that more reading the flow of the game in terms of when you might switch guys in and out? Uh, both. I mean, it's part of the game plan and the feel of the game. Uh, so I would both. Last week with, with the off week, did, did that provide any data or did you learn anything different about this team and, and what they can do functionally in this offense? Not really. I mean, the biggest thing for us is just executing. Uh, right now, the, the scheme is the scheme, but execution is what's going to make the difference. You know, when every coach says that and nobody ever likes that answer, but it actually is the truth. Uh, the teams that have 11 people doing the same thing win. The teams that have 10 people doing the same thing lose. The teams that turn the ball over lose. The teams that own the ball win. And then the, the next X factor to winning and losing is explosive plays. That's when those players come into effect, is after 11 guys did it right, right? You have the ball in your hands and there's a deep safety. Do you get tackled for a gain of 12 or do you go for a gain of 65? That's what makes offenses elite. What makes offenses good is execution. That's what we're trying to get to, that execution level right now. Go back to Ira from Morgan. With uh, obviously the emphasis they put on on turnovers uh, in Miami, and they've had a lot of success at it. Are they doing? Do they? Is it generally a product of them confusing quarterbacks, or is it um, things they do technique wise in terms of stripping balls? Or what have you seen from them that has led them to the success? I think it's just the mentality. Uh, they definitely coach it and they preach it over there. And uh, they do a great job attacking the ball, uh, whether it's coming from over top, whether it's coming from underneath and trying to punch the ball out. But those guys, when once they have somebody grabbed, right, they try to hold them up and they try to the next second and third and fourth guy try to get that ball out. So they actually try to keep you up and they try to strip that ball out from that perspective. So we're just trying to coach our guys on when you're not getting anywhere, when you're tackled, but they're standing you up, you got to cross the ball and you got to squeeze tight because they're going to be coming in for it. 
are you guys able to to rep all four quarterbacks currently? Yes, we are. I mean, we got all four of those guys got reps in uh, multiple parts of practice today. All right, thank you. Thank you all. Y'all have a great day.